my life. Uh, I want to thank the organization, thank Mr. Bashadi, uh, Coach John Harbaugh, Eric DaCosta, Sashi Brown, um, everybody in the organization. So many people in this wonderful, wonderful organization who show me so much love um, all throughout the years. Just can't thank them enough, man. So um, excited, fired up, determined uh, for the opportunity that I have, man, and um, I'm ready to get to work. Exactly. You know, during your playing career, did you and, and did you ever thought about hey, you know, post career, you know, possibly getting into coach or anything like that? Um, Not while I was playing. Um, my plan was honestly make it to the National Football League, play like 10, 15 years, you know, go back home, coach some high school football. But never thought I'd be coaching the National Football League. Uh, so this is this is a blessing. And obviously, with my situation, when I got the opportunity to start coaching. And National Football League, this was um, one, one goal of mine. So um, it's just crazy to see it all come together. But initially, it definitely was not. I never, I never thought this would happen. Jack, can you think about the last time I think you had a press conference in the year was to announce your retirement? Yeah. And from that point to now, this, this journey, what, can, can you take us through a little bit? The, the kind of, what's it been like emotionally to get to back to this point? Uh, man, it, it was tough. It was tough initially when I had to come in and, and sit with you guys last time and hang up the cleats hang up the pads, hang up the helmet. Um, but like I said, I had great support from my family and from the organization. You know, they, they, they support me right away. Uh, talking about the organization, they was like, I know you want to get right into coaching. Won't you, get, uh, won't you come right back up here and get to work? And I, and I did that. And um, I, I learned what it took to be a coach in National Football League, learned from a lot of great people. And, um, you know, just continue to work, 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 work. Fell in love with the game as a coach. And, um, you know, now we're here. But, um, it definitely, it definitely was a, a crazy journey from that moment last time I was here to now. But like I said, I'm excited, and it just shows, man. You you put in the work, um, you treat people right the right way. Uh, great things can happen. Yeah, you just you just alluded to it. I mean, when you when you did start to make that transition, who were the people that you leaned on the most to sort of figure out how to do this new job? Man, it was it's so many people. I mean, when I first got here, I remember uh, when I first got back up here to coach, Ozzy was like, all right now, you know these hours are different, so get ready. And uh, so he's one of the guys, obviously Coach Harbaugh. I mean, man, there's so many, so many guys in the building, like, um, you know, Mike McDonald, uh, Wink Martindale, Sterling Lucas, uh, Jesse Mincer. Uh, man, I could go, I could name on a list, a list of, uh, of people, but just so many people helped me out along the way, help me get acclimated to what it takes to, to do this, to be successful in this profession. And I can't thank those people enough. And I know I, I named some people, but I know I missed a lot. But uh, I have so many people who helped me out the way. Yeah, it sounded like it, it happened. It all kind of came together pretty quickly. And you were talking to Green Bay Monday. And, and then, um, you know, just how quickly did it come together for you in, in terms of, you know, I mean, was there a, a, even like a lengthy interview process here? Or, or, and what was that? process like for you? Yeah, so Monday, it was crazy. I even had a chance to process, you know, what happened uh, the day before and, uh, you know, had conversations with Coach Harbaugh starting on Monday, you know, because we knew, we knew uh, what the possibility of things that could happen uh, with, with the staff. So I was talking with him Monday, going through the interview process with him, um, as well as Tuesday, you know, it was, it was two days of real, real, de real detailed conversations. Uh, talked to Green Bay on Monday, interviewed with them Wednesday, and, um, you know, Wednesday after the after the interview with Green Bay, had another conversation with Coach Harbaugh, and that's when things really started to pick up steam. Yeah, over, the, over the last seven years, it's been a quick ascent for you, starting out as a coach, now being in DC. Is there a moment, a conversation, where that kind of sticks out for you, where you thought, okay, being an NFL assistant coach, position coach, whatever, but that you could be a defensive coordinator, that you could have aspirations that have you sitting where you are right now? Is there anything that stands out? Um, I just think just the just the process. The more the more I got into it, the more I started to dive more into coaching. The first year was kind of just getting adjusted, getting acclimated to the transition, and then second year being full fledged and um, so forth and so uh, so on. So um, I wouldn't say it was just a specific moment. I just know that probably by year three or four, like I was, I'm fully entrusted into into the coaching things. I'm, I'm excited about the process of, of game planning, going through the process of studying opponents, off-season studies, all the, all the little details that go into it. Um, I was fully entrenched, to, entrenched into it, just like how 
I was as a player. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say specific moment, but just the, the whole process, man. I like I, I love what I do. I tell people all the time. I never thought I would say this. It's like I have no aspirations of, of playing at all. You know, I love I love this. Zach, you've uh, been a leader as you know a captain, a field coach, player. Uh, when you transition to being a coach, what are some of the similarities that translated over from being a leader as a player, and what were some of the differences in how you had to lead? Um, I think just if you were if you're a leader, it really doesn't matter what position you're in, whether you're a coach or player, or just in your community, no matter what your occupation is. And I think the things that go with being a leader is first thing you got to lead by example. So you got to do things right and uh, to the best of your ability, do things right all the time. You know, be on time, be prepared. Um, I think that that carries over from being a player to a coach, um, be organized, you know, and then you just got to show the passion, show that you really care uh, for, for the person that you're trying to lead and for the people you're trying to lead. I think when people know that you genuinely care about them and you care about their well-being and you care about the, uh, what's, what's best for them, um, I think that they'll, they'll follow you as long as you're, you're doing what you say you're going to do and, and you're leading by example. Gonna be your first time to call in place for the defense. Um, what have you done to, to prepare before this in your, in your other roles with this team? And how do you kind of do you, is that something you do during games? Sort of imagine what you call, or do you do it when you're breaking down the film after? How do you kind of mentally prepare for that? I, I think what we do a great job here is everybody. It's a collaborative effort going into the game plan. So um, obviously. The coordinator is going to have the final say so, but we all have, we all have game plan areas. We all watch all the film together, and um, we come with our own ideas and we we bring it to the table. And everybody's voice is heard. And ultimately, one person makes the decision, but everybody's voice is heard. And I would say probably about three years ago, people were telling me like, "Hey, if you got aspirations of being a coordinator, when you're watching the film throughout the week, watching the film on your own, you need to start seeing what how you would call the game." What would, uh, how you would stop certain game plans, certain schemes, and how you would attack certain schemes. So always, always did that, always had the conversations. And um, like I said, being here, it's easy because it's a collaborative effort um, and the game plan. You very, you very um, into, that, into that role. You know, like I said, defensive coordinator has the final say so, but here's a collaborative effort and you see the process and you very much part of the process, even as an assistant coach. So Zach, you, talk about Bay, from, you mm -hmm. talked about Green Bay in that yeah. situation. When the AFC Championship ends yeah. and you get over all that, did you have any inclination that AI could be a candidate for defensive coordinator knowing Mike McDonald's situation? Because I guess if the Ravens are playing in the Super Bowl, obviously we're not sitting. Yeah. Um, I knew it was a possibility, you know what I mean, just because you, you started seeing guys on our staff, guys were getting interviews. Obviously, you knew uh, Mike was – it was a hot name in the, in the head coaching uh, circuit. So you definitely knew it was a possibility, but like you never know until the thing actually starts happening. So um, I knew it was a possibility. Um, you know, I was focused, fully focused on, uh, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs. And then when I got the call from Green Bay, uh, my fiance could tell you, you know, I just started, I started preparing, getting stuff together. So until, you, until it really happens, you really don't know, but you knew it was a possibility in the back of your mind. Zach, where are you going to call the game from? Are you going to call it from the field? Or are you going to call it from the press box? Or, and, and which one do you think is, is better for you? Um, I got I got to be on the field. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got to look at, you know, players in their eyes and see what's going on and get a feel for how guys are feeling out there. So, you know, people have their different ways. I got to be on the field. I'm, I'm more like being into it and getting a feel off of motion and how guys are really feeling out there. You were, when you were a player, Zach, what did, what did you look for from the D coordinator? And how much do you think it helps you that you can still see things from a player's point of view? Um, I just looked for uh, a, a, a well-detailed, organized game plan and somebody who can um, lead, you know, lead with passion and energy. You know, lead, tell us, like, lead us, tell us what we need to do, where we need to be at, why we need to be there and how it's going to work for us to go out there and execute and do what we need to do at a high level. So I just try to carry, carry that over, man. Like, as, as a D coordinator, I'm looking at, boom, first thing first, I got to have my guys prepared from a mental standpoint and a physical standpoint, all right? Then I like um, giving them answers to potential problems or to potential questions that the offense may present. And I think once you do that, um, you know, you build that trust, you build that relationship, and guys will do whatever you need them to do for you. Zach, you're taking over one of the best defenses in the league. Obviously, you want to 
leave your own fingerprint? What type of identity do you want this defense to have? Man, I, w I, want our, I want our defense to play together first and foremost, like 11 people playing as one. Let's start there. The next thing, I, w I want to be violent, very violent, physical. That's just the standard here, man. Everything we're going to do is going to be with uh, physicality and, and violence, all right? And then just execution, execution ex executing at a high level, executing in certain situations, executing all the time. And then the last thing I'll leave you with is just, I would say, organized chaos, man. Present a lot of problems to the offense. All right, never give the answer to the offense before the snap. But um, that's what I would say, man. Identity, first thing first, is hit everything that moves. We're going to play violent, we're going to play together, and we're going to execute. Zach, obviously, you're a great part of this, this staff last year, but you know, by many metrics, a, a historic defense for this team last year. How does it feel to take on the challenge of, of building upon that historic performance by this defense and trying to find ways to grow? Uh, it, it feels great. It feels great. I think. Uh, one thing that I've always lived by is either you, you never stay the same. You either get better or you get worse. And obviously, you know, last year was a, was a great year. And uh, the thing that we did last year is we went through the process. We, we, we started in the offseason around this time year, self-scouted, look what we did good, look what we could build on. And I think that uh, led by uh, Coach Harbs, the thing that he, that he pushes us to do as coaches is we got to uh, be in front of things. We want to be cutting edge. I always want to evolve and always want to uh, – be ready for the next thing that the offense may present. So we're going to get in the lab uh, this offseason. We're going we're gonna to look at ourselves, look at things we did well, look how we can make it even better, look at things we need to improve on and, and, and get better at that, then look at some new ideas that we can possibly present and get ready to roll out there by the time we kick, the, uh, kick off the ball the first week of the season. Zach, what about the offseason for you now that you're taking on these new responsibilities? What are you looking forward to kind of refine the details of going into the 2024 season? I'm looking forward to just diving into the diving into the tape. You know, during the season, you just you know you, you watch the film that you that you played on Sunday, right? And then now you got to start getting ready for the next opponent. We do self scout throughout the season, but now we can take a deep dive, look at our you know our rules, everything that that we're going through, and how it fits in, and how it fits in with our uh, personnel, what we want to do. But I'm excited about just looking in, starting from day, starting from scratch one. I mean, starting from starting from scratch and, and seeing how we're going to rebuild the defense back up because it's a process that you got to go through each and every offseason if you want to continue to build and continue to be great. And I'm excited about that. Zach, so much has been made about your, your age. You know, you've been a, one of the younger coaches. Does that mean anything to you being able to do this at such a young age? And has it kind of caught up to you just how fast it's, you know, it's been? I'm sure it hasn't been that fast for you, but just the rise you've had such, in such a short span. Um, for me personally, I, I, the age thing is not a big deal to me. I just look like I just look at it like, man, I'm the next man for the job, next man to, to for the mission to to do it. But from the outside looking in, you know, I do see how it's it's inspiring to a lot of uh, people who are young that are into coaching. And you know, my biggest thing to, to to let those people know is just, man, you can you can do great things and you can get great opportunities if you just continue to work hard, put your head down, and and do things the right way and continue to, to learn and evolve. So uh, for me personally, I really don't pay attention to the age. I just look at it like I'm the next man for the job and I got to get ready to, 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 uh, to do that. Zach, what was, I guess, what is or was the top your to-do list when you officially got hired on Thursday? You know, kind of what have you done step-wise to address some of those? Or what were you? Um, shoot. <laughs> Organize and we got to get ready to get some some more coaches in here. You know what I mean? Um, you know, credit to the coaches that got um, opportunities at other places. They're, they're, they're heck of coaches. That's why they got those opportunities. But now we're just going through that process, man, of, uh, you know, figuring out who, who's going to come in and, and do a heck of a job for us. And, and then also getting the self-scout stuff, getting ready to go. And then we got the combine coming up. So, uh, you know. It's a, it's a lot of stuff going on, but at the top of the to, top of the do uh, at the top of the to do list, um, it's obviously you know filling out the staff with coach and um, you know self scout, looking at how we can continue to evolve as a defense. Have you, have you had the opportunity to, to talk to guys on the team who are obviously are in the contract next year and 
kind of reach out and explain just the new situation? Yeah, man, a lot of people reached out. I've seen people um, in the building just in passing, and, and guys are excited. I'm excited, man. And um, they're just saying they're gonna get every, I'm going to get everything out of them. And I told them that you're going to get everything out of me. So uh, I'm excited. Told them, told them to get ready to, uh, to get some rest, you know, get your body ready. And when we get back, it's on. I haven't thought of that specifically. I know what the standard is here as a, as, as a uh, defense here in Baltimore, and um, it, it means a lot to me. So I haven't thought about that specifically, but obviously um, it's been a lot of great coaches that come through here, a lot of uh, great defensive coordinators that have come through here. So, um, yeah, man, it's, 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 I'm next in line. I got a big challenge and a big opportunity, but I'm excited for it. Two years ago, you asked Mike McDonald if he wanted to build off of the previous scheme or if he wanted to create his own. He said he wanted to build off of the previous one. Yeah. What is your approach from now McDonald's scheme and what mm -hmm. do you want to uh, continue and what something? What are some things that you might want to change or, or navigate differently? Yeah, I mean, we definitely want to want to build build on that. Like that's that's a scheme that we helped build here um, for, for for years. It's been it's been a scheme in making and. Kind of uh, going back to the point I made earlier, um, all those questions that you just asked, we would find out in the off-season studies, you know, in the self-scout studies of what we want to do and how we're going to build on it and, and what will change up and how we can get better. Like I said, we're always looking to get better. I think that's why you've seen uh, great defenses here in the, in, the, in the past, and that's what we got to do to continue. You always got to look at yourself and look at how you can uh, improve and how you can make it better. And, all, and on top of that, staying in front of what's coming next because you know we know it's going to be something uh, that the offense is going to get together and try to present to us new this year. So uh, we're trying to stay in front of that. But that's part of the process. That's part of uh, what we're excited to go do. And, uh, you know, we can't wait to get started on that. Zach, do you have much input into the hiring process of uh, assistant coaches? And can you restore the closeness that this – defense had with um, those defensive assistants who left? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I, the final decision is Coach Harbaugh and uh, Eric DaCosta, but I'm, I'm very much involved, involved with it. They do a great job of, um, you know, letting me be in on the interviews, obviously, having me running the interviews and communicating back and forth. It's an open line of communication. Um, it, it's, it's been great and very, very much a part of that. And then just going back to your, uh, your deal about being close as a staff, I mean, we had to build it. Every year, every year when you're building a team, building a staff, a staff is, is part of a team. Every time you do, every, every year you do that, you have to build, you have to build that trust and, and build that camaraderie, build that teamwork. You gotta build that every single year. If, let's say for some reason, we had the same exact staff that came back this past, uh, that we had last year, this year. You know, last year that really didn't mean any, wouldn't mean anything. You have to rebuild that trust. Because a trust is hard to gain, it's easy to lose. So every year you got to build it up. But I'm confident of the people that we have. We do a great job of bringing uh, great people in this organization. So I'm fully confident once we get the staff filled out that uh, we'll be able to build that trust, we'll be able to build that teamwork, and uh, be the best staff we could possibly be you know, for our players. Zach, Zach when, you, when you met with John last week, uh, what did he want to know from you? I mean, you guys have known each other, obviously, for, for a long time. But what, what, did, what did he ask you? I just want to know if I was if I was ready and you know how I see the game and how I would game plan and all the little details that go into play calling. So kind of picked my brain about that. It, it was it was good. Um, I know you've had several years to adjust to, to the coaching side, but does it ever hit you, especially in this last week? Man, John was my first head coach in the NFL. In the NFL. Eric was one of those guys who, who helped bring me in for some wise and you're kind of working on the other side of the curtain and and seeing how teams get built from that side has ever struck you hard? Um, yeah, man, it's, it was – it's crazy. Like, me, as a, as a player, you kind of really don't see all the behind the scenes, all the work that a lot of people in the organization uh, put in to make everything, uh, you know, great for you as a player to go out there and just go play football. You know, me being on the uh, other side of things, you kind of see all the details, the day-in, day-out operations of what it takes – to, uh, you know, to help the organization, you know, be great and, and be well ran like the Ravens organization is. So, um, like I said, I've been, I've been on the coaching side a lot, so it's not as surprising now, you know, but when I first made that transition, I was like, okay, now I see why this organization always has a legit chance to compete for championships. 
Um, so I haven't played you know, linebacker and, and playing at a high level. Do you, how, how does that perspective help you? Do you think that, that – because that's a unique perspective that you can bring to it. How do you think that helps you as a defense coordinator? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, when you, when you play the game, you kind of get a, you kind of, you, you do have the experience of actually being out there on the field in the cleats. And, you know, a lot of times you put stuff up on the board and it sounds good and everything, but when you're really out there, stuff's moving a lot faster. You got somebody trying to hit you and things of that nature. So, uh, that helps you could kind of be like, okay, I understand what you saw in this specific situation. But, um, you know, honestly, as a coach, that, that really doesn't help you from the standpoint of teaching, coaching, and getting information to the players. Because as a coach, it's really not what you know, it's what your players know and what you can get them to know. So that's why you see a lot of players, you know, it, 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 that's why you don't see a lot of players really just get into coaching and things of that nature. Because coaching and playing is two totally different things. You know, as a player, you just got to understand, okay, this is what I do, this is how it fits in what we're doing. As a coach, you got to be able to know what's coming next and be able to spit that information out to your players and make sure they're prepared to go. Those conversations like when you told your dad and your brothers about what was going on here and the opportunity you may have. Um, they, they, were, they were fired up. They were fired up. And, um, you know, more than anything, my family, they get a chance to see, you know, the work and stuff that I put in behind the scenes that not necessarily everybody sees even just in this building, you know. So um, just the conversations were, were great, man. They was fired up. They was excited. Um, you know, they, they've been supportive. And then they always ended off the phone. All right, now get off the phone. Get ready to get to work. You got a lot of work to do. So, um, you know, they, they understand, man. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy for them, and they're happy for me. But they, they understand, um, you know, what, what's, what's at stake and, and what's up next. So, you know, they're going to be there every step of the way with me. Zach, in, in ways, did, how much you enjoyed coaching and when you got back involved, did that help you avoid any kind of lingering kind of disappointment to, you know, the way your career, your playing career ended? It did, man. It did. And um, that's why I tell people all the time, man, I believe purple and black. Like, this, this organization, this, this means something to me. This means a little more to me. It's not just me just coaching, uh, you know, for in the National Football League, just for any other organization. Now I'm coaching for the organization that, that, that had my back. Like when I went through what I went through, um, they didn't allow me to really put my head down. You know, I was, I didn't know what the next step was gonna be. Boom, Coach Harbaugh, Izzy, Mr. Bashadi, they called me, they say, hey, I know you wanna get into coaching. You're coming right back up here and getting ready to work with us. And them doing that for me, just, just shows that they had my back um, in a tough situation. So they gonna get everything I got, you know, out of me. And like I said, it means something. I bleed purple and black. Because your comfortability with the organization and working with John and understanding Steve Bashadi, the owner and everything, mm -hmm. does that help with taking on this new challenge of mm -hmm. being a defensive coordinator? Yeah, it does help because I understand the standard and the expectation. You know, I, I've, I've lived it. And then I think what's been so great about me being here, I feel like God placed me here for a reason just because all the values and standards that this organization stands for, on and off the field, I stand for it. There's a couple things off the field, man, just being a, a good person, treating people with respect um, and, and working hard, man, I value all that. And then on the football field, from a football standpoint, you know, talk about playing together as a team, playing physical, playing violent, and finishing everything you do. And that's what I've believed in as a football player before I even got here. So when I got here, it was just like a, a match made in heaven, but definitely makes it easier because I, I understand the standard and expectation. I, I lived it, been part of it, and I'm excited for it. That's, that's the, I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, could, could you take us inside that conversation you had with Steve Bashotti when he was kind of wel welcoming you back to the Ravens? And, and then how long did it take for you to flip your mind from the disappointment and, and from being a player to then being a coach? All right. So he called me. I'll tell you, this is a true story. So he called me, and I just had got my uh, performance player bonus. And that year, you know, it's, all, it's out there public rep. That year, it was like, like $407,000. So he, first day he called me, he said, hey, I see you got you a nice little parting gift. All right. So <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, dang, I didn't know he was checking that. You know, I didn't know he was looking at that. Um, but uh, he called me and said, man, I understand you wanted to get into coaching. We think, high, we think highly of you. Um, you know, everybody speaks the world of you. I've seen you work. Everybody say you're a hard worker, and I know you want to get into coaching. He was like, we would love to have you back in the organization if that's something you want to do. 
And he was like, you'll be, you know, we'll get Ozzy in contact with you. So I said, great. I said, thank you. I'll be right back. Shoot, the next day I'm calling, I'm probably blowing Ozzy's phone up. Hey, Ozzy, when you ready for me to come back up? He's like, I got you. And um, he did, man, and, and it, it, it was great. And just them, you know, him, him making the phone call and the organization doing that for me, like I said, w- w- meant the most because I, I didn't have time to sit there and hang my head. And I got right back to work, and they helped, you know, teach me and get me ready for my second career, which is coaching. They've been with me every step of the way and supported me every step of the way. Um, how did how did John tell you? Uh, just did he call you in his office, or uh, in, in, what was that conversation? I guess. Yeah, so we we talked. Like I said, it was it's crazy how everything happened. We talked Monday, you know, went through the interview uh, process. Talked Tuesday again, still still you know asking me questions, grill you know basically kind of grilling me a little bit, and then um, Wednesday he called me into his office. And her mom's like, man, what do you, what do you want to talk about? You know, I was like, I'm talking to this dude, you know, Monday, Tuesday, like, what's up? You know, I'm like, I thought I'd answer every question you had. So, you know, we're still talking Wednesday. And then he was like, he asked me again, he said, you ready to call it? And I was like, yes, I'm ready. And <laughs> he was like, all right, well, I'm offering you a position. And that's how it went. So it, it was great, man. I heard those words, man, and smile. You know, I was grinning from ear to ear. And I'm just thankful that he has that belief in me. and. Like I said, I'm gonna work my butt off and do everything I can to, you know, make it right. Here's your more, please. Zach, who were the people that reached out to you after the news went public? That I mean, I'm sure your phone was blowing up. If you haven't even responded to anybody at this point yet, or who are the ones that stuck out? Man, um, a lot of people respond to me, man. Like, and let me just say this right now. If I haven't got back to you, I promise you I haven't switched up. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. But I got like 800-something messages. But uh, a lot of people, obviously, what sticks out is, is man, just family, f- friends, uh, coaches I've worked with, players I've played with, um, players players that I've coached. I mean, it's been so, it's been so much love. Um, you know, it's, it's been so much love, man, and, and it's, I can't. I can't thank everybody enough, man. Just to see, uh, you know, all the love that I've been getting has been wonderful. And it just makes me just want to grind even harder. It makes me just want to go even harder because you got that many people showing you love. That means they believe in you. And when somebody believes in you, you do everything you can to make it right. And that's what I'm focused on. That's what I'm excited about. Matt, you said that uh, it's a collaborative effort calling the plays at the defensive level. But at the helm, it's going to be you. Yeah. What gives you confidence that you can call the Ravens? defense when there's live rounds. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I've, I've seen it done. I've been a part of it. And what makes me confident is my preparation I'm going to put in. I'm going to prepare my butt off. And that's where your confidence comes in anything you do. When you're not confident that you can do a job, that means you haven't prepared. So if you prepare the right way like you're supposed to prepare, you're going to be confident. And I plan on preparing the right way. All right. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all.